Coming up on Techzilla, Mac OS X Leopard has arrived and we're gonna take a little peek. Plus, change your iPod battery all by yourself. And we go behind the scenes at Industrial Light and Magic to see how Transformers the movie was made. In this week's episode, which is brought to you by Netflix, GoDaddy.com, and BratCat. Welcome to Techzilla. I'm Jessica Corbin. I'm still not Patrick Moore. <laughs> no matter how hard you try, you I will never be. be. I, I'm a poor substitute, I know. You I'm will. Sarah Lane. I'm here <laughs> filling in for Patrick because he is probably getting thrown up on right now. <laughs> Daddy duty. Yeah. Daddy duty. Where are Patrick? You're having fun, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so right off the top, yeah. I want to talk to you about one of my new favorite things. Okay. Not really. So <laughs> earlier this what week, is it? I saw the HKAK 47 Assault rifle for sale what? on glamguns.com for just, you know, $1,072.95. Wait, 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 what? Okay, why? it is a Hello Kitty assault rifle. Like an assault rifle? It comes with a that, hand, a that... crocheted shoulder stock muffler, and a titanium plating. For 100 bucks more, you can get your name wood burned into it. Okay, I, I need to take, let's take a step back, okay? <laughs> we need to take a lot like of Patrick steps back. Now. <laughs> um, <laughs> Why is there a Hello Kitty assault rifle? Is it is it real? Like, can it kill somebody? I mean, I think so. It's a thousand dollars, so I think for a thousand dollars, you better you better <laughs> be able to that it's gonna you better at be able least to perform maybe some damage. hurt a bird. Wow, this is very weird. But Hello Kitty, I, I, your marketing is quite quite funny. How you license your your brand is quite funny. They also have Hello Kitty wedding dresses. Hello Kitty pianos. Oh. Hello Kitty Hummer limousines. Now that's not green. Definitely not green. If Kitty. they did, there would be some redemption. And then Hello Kitty dog houses. Which is a, that's an ironic gift. <laughs> Why, <laughs> meow? Because it's a dog it's a house. <laughs> I mean. That's disturbing, Jessica, thanks. You're welcome. Thank I you just for wanted to turn me into that your way. That was kind of quite... scary, psychotic little world. Okay, can we move on? <laughs> yes, we can move on. Um, and I'm actually kind of excited about this, uh, our next little project, because mm -hmm. I'm not really one to take apart things normally. Right. I'm much more of an internal gal. Okay. I'm a software person. Okay. Not so much a hardware person. However, I've got this old iPod. It's a third generation iPod. Um, and the battery's been dying for like three years. Right. I mean, to the point where when it's, you know, when it's charged fully, it lasts just a couple hours. Right. Not even a short flight to Vegas right. would get me through. So there are a lot of companies online that will teach you how to take your battery out of your iPod, replace the battery with tools and tutorials. Um, a company called iFixit um, had a really good tutorial. So we went ahead and bought the tools. <laughs> They're just little like green <laughs> plastic things. And the new battery. The whole thing was under $20. That's not a bad deal. It's you know. cost effective, yeah. I mean, the iPod was a lot more expensive than that. Absolutely. So many years ago, <laughs> since it's a third generation iPod and all. However, um, the tutorial is pretty easy, so I'm just gonna go through it, give you an idea of what I went through to get this far. So before you open your iPod, you wanna flip the hold switch. Opening the iPod can be kind of a challenge, though. It, it might take a few attempts. It certainly took me a few attempts. So <laughs> you, using the plastic iPod opening tool or a guitar pick, I've heard, is also great. If you've got one around, if you're a musician or whatever, you kind of want to jam it in between the plastic front and the metal back of the iPod. And then once inserted, you snap the five other tabs that hold the iPod together open. Um, it's kind of it's kind of tricky. It's 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 not it's not an easy thing because these iPods are put together um, pretty tightly. Then you want to lift the back panel away, and you want to be sure to avoid catching it on the headphone jack because that can be a little sucker. In there. <laughs> Next, you take off the tape attached to the top of the battery. You lift the battery up from the hard drive, and then finally, you lift the hard drive near the FireWire port to get into the battery connector. Then you disconnect the white battery connector from the logic board. Now, this all sounds fine and good, right? You think, uh-huh, okay, sounds good, right? And the steps, again, online looked really simple, but I gotta tell you, um, what tripped me up was the very first step. Getting this, getting this thing to disconnect from itself uh, was not just as easy as using these things. Well, I mean, I hate to point out the obvious, but like, how do they think that a sub, uh, you know, a material like plastic is going to be stronger than metal? Well, and the thing is, just that I fix it. The company that I was using the tutorial and the tools from. I mean, they're not the only ones that are selling this stuff. Yeah. I mean, these are like the standard tool to open your iPod. What I needed to use was a straight edge. Okay. And I actually had to enlist the help of David Randolph, our you know resident 
hardware expert right. to help me because I had to like manhandle this thing. Right. And, and you I'm didn't want to slice a off a finger and I'm glad you enlisted his help. Yeah, me Sarah. too. Um, it actually was really easy once we got we got these two things split apart. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. So really all you do, once you get your new battery, you go back the steps in reverse. Uh -huh. um, and that's, Voila. if you were listening <laughs> and then you just play this video backwards, You'll be good to go. <laughs> and maybe you'll hear the encrypted message too if you play it backwards. Okay. Anyway, so so John from something that was fairly simple um, that you can do yourself to something that is not so simple at all, blockbuster digital effects, they keep getting better and better. And case in point, the movie Transformers. They look so realistic, but how? Here's how. Photorealism, the mandate that came down from director Michael Bay to the digital effects artist, but what is it? Michael was very insistent about being able to recognize pieces from real cars in these robots in order to make them look you know, realistic. One thing that we really focused on on this film was making the um, CG uh, car parts look very dirty. It helps increase the realism if it doesn't come out, because making it clean is the easy thing to do. We had sort of delivered one model and Michael said, no, don't like it, you need to put a lot more recognizable car parts in there. So. Uh, it was really important to him that when you look at these robots, you, you see things that you might recognize from your own car. You look at uh, pistons and um, drivetrains and you know brake calipers and all those things. And it's sort of this combination of you want something that looks nice as an outline or sculpturally. At the same time, you want it to feel functional. So if there's a, if there's a chain on the side that drives some wheels, maybe that's used to raise his arm. Or if there's a piston um, sort of nestled into his arm, then you want that to contract when the, when the arm moves. By the time we were done, um, we had really layered on the dirt and, and the, the texture um, because they were, they've been battling for thousands of years and uh, we, we needed to make it look like they weren't fresh out of the factory. When the camera gets close to Optimus, you expect to see in the blue or the red, you expect to see the metal flake, just like you see in the, in the paint colors on the truck. You expect to see the swirls on the brushed aluminum. Expect to see dirt, scratches, grease, scorch, all that stuff. But how do you make clunky, supersized robots move like dynamic athletes? We had a, a what we call the jiggle system that animators could control, and they could say how loose each piece was, and then based on the the running, like the footstep coming down, pieces would uh, jiggle up and down or move side to side, and um, that really helped for shots like this where Optimus is running under the bridge. Um, just to get some motion into his chest and um, into his legs and help sell the fact that he's 30 feet tall. And when a 30 foot tall robot tears through a city, you better expect some destruction. A big part of making the Transformers successful is um, integrating them into the shot and having stuff happen in the environment around them and having them have an effect on the environment. <clears throat> Even in this case where they had a, a real explosion there, it didn't do what he was hoping for on set. You can see the top part of the truck just falls straight down here. Um, so again, we have to go in there and augment it with a CG version of the truck um, in order to have it blow back this way and make the characters feel like they're in more peril. Here's another great example where the background plate of the city is real, but pretty much everything on top of that we had to create. And um, <clears throat> figuring shots like this out, like this one out where the planes are ripping apart and falling down takes a, a huge collaboration between so many different departments and people to make them happen. To see a shot go from here to here is simply amazing. But according to visual effects supervisor Scott Farrar, this is just the tip of the iceberg. I think we're in the stone age as far as computer computers are concerned. There's a lot of refinement to go through, go through to make it easier for the artist. You know, all we're trying to do is get something out of here, out there, to show you. That's all it is. Yeah, that's all. That's all you have to do. Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> no big deal. That was easy. <laughs> all right. So thanks to all those wonderful people over at ILM. And if you are wanting to see Transformers in its entirety, it just came out on DVD, making a run for those Oscars. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Not only special effects, but best actor and actress. <laughs> By a robot. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Sarah, um, do you want to say it? Or oh. do you want me to say it? OK, I guess I'll say Just it. Say it. All right, Neha, what's coming up next? Next on Techzilla, we take a look at Mac OS X Leopard. But first, Heather, our producer, is gonna show us her pick of the week. Crazy Band Alert! The world's first vegetable orchestra, founded in 1998, consists of 10 musicians, one cook, and a sound technician. These guys are serious about their veggies. 
This nine-piece ensemble's instruments are made entirely out of fresh vegetables. Carrot flutes, split eggplant percussion, a leek violin, and a gurkaphone, which is a hollowed-out cucumber with a carrot mouthpiece and a bell pepper bell. They play out regularly, but whatever you do, don't ask them if they're vegetarians. The sixth major release of Mac OS X operating system has finally arrived, and senior editor of Macworld, Chris Breen, is here now to show it off. Thanks for stopping by. It's great to be here, thanks. So it's called Leopard. It is called Leopard, OS X 10.5. And you're going to show us five marquee aspects of Leopard. That's right, I am. Okay. And we're going to start off with something called Time Machine, because, yes. I mean, look at this desktop. It looks like a supernova. It's because galactic. It's, it is. It's about going back in time. Uh -huh. And the idea is that even though it has this wonderful name, it's really just a backup program. And the idea is that most people don't back up. So you get Leopard, you get out an external hard drive, you plug it into your machine, and up comes this dialog box saying, would you like to back up to this drive? Yes, I would, thank you very much. And that's all you do. In the background, while you're working, it's backing up quietly, quietly, quietly. And at some point, you can throw stuff out, and then a week later say, oh, you know, I needed that file. So all you have to do is you go to the Time Machine icon here, you click this. See? Oh. See? And yeah. it's only a backup program, and still you go, ooh. So I'm going to go and look in my uh, pictures folder, for example. And I know I created some movie a while ago. It's a, oh, here See? it is. Look at that. And there it is. Now, if I go back to today, it's gone. So if I go back here, I can recover this. All I have to do is highlight the thing, click restore, and it's copied back to my hard drive. That's amazing. Now, does it, it doesn't copy everything. No, it, only it doesn't have to. It uh, only copies specified documents right. or files. Right. By default, it will copy everything. everything. But if you go into the system preference, you have the option there to choose a different disk, or if you like, within options, you can say, only back up my documents. Don't back up all that system stuff, because I don't care about that I stuff. I love it, because I need to back up, yet I don't remember, so I love this function. Right. So then you, we also have Spotlight. Right. We, we have... We have Spotlight right now. We have Spotlight so right now, but it uh, stinks. <laughs> and so well, now we have new Spotlight, and it's good. Because under the old Spotlight, I would go up here to my little Spotlight menu, and what Spotlight does is it keeps track of all the metadata on your Mac, and it just tags everything. So if I can type in, for example, Hawaii, as I've done here, under Tiger, I would have 8 trillion hits yep. because it finds Hawaii and everything. Yep. Under here, however, it gets just the stuff I want. I can show all in here. And finally, for those who have been using the Mac before, you could not search by file name before. Now you can. I can select this and bang, I've got that. And since we have Spotlight up here, I can show off something cool, which is called Quick Look. So I can select this and say, I think that's the image I want, but let me press the space bar and find out. Uh, that's definitely what you want. That's what I want. No, what I really wanted <laughs> of course was that's this what you wanted, turtle. Chris. <laughs> it's, uh, it was actually after the and turtle. turtle. Okay. And uh, the trees. <laughs> so, and the idea of Quick Look is we have a bunch of stuff. We don't know what it is because it's all got similar names. So I can do this with a picture, a movie, an audio file, a mm -hmm. text file, and I can see it immediately. Uh -huh. So that's Quick Look. Quick Look. Yep. Okay, and then number four, we have something called Stacks. Stacks, right. Stacks, here we have this fine dock down here, and uh, there's stuff in it. Well, what's this? Oh, look, it's this folder, and it shows me just by clicking on here what I've got. So the idea here is that you take any folder full of stuff, you put it in the dock, and then you can stack it. And if you hold down the shift key, you can do it See, like See, these moves, that. it's just, it's so gorgeous. Isn't what is pretty? it about the smooth moves that it just wins my heart over every time? It's that Apple way. <laughs> Everything is very smooth and very sexy. Love so it. That's okay. the way they very do sexy. It. Very okay, and then finally, we have something called spaces. Right, we have spaces. And the idea here is that, and a lot of this, a lot of the new OS 10 is about this, is cleaning up clutter because mm -hmm. you just have stuff everywhere. So in spaces, there are virtual desktops. Ah. So if I want to go over here, I can go there. So would we have like space. one for home, one for work, one for play, one right, for... Right, or the kind of task you're doing. For example, uh -huh. I might have my browser down here, my uh -huh. email client up here, Photoshop down here, and when things get cluttered, I immediately shift to a different space. You can also do things like you can say, I always want Safari, the browser, to open up in space four, and my email to open up in space three. If I have a Microsoft Word document here, for example, double click that, it will always open in space two because mm -hmm. I told it to. Thank you so much for stopping by and telling us about Leopard. Great, thanks for having me. Informative and sexy. Ellen's very sexy. <laughs> All right. So for more information, check out MacWorld.com. All right, Neha, what's coming up? Next up, we show you the latest in ebook readers. We might even convert you. 
Now for your cool website fix. FreeDocumentaries.org is a place for you to educate yourself and gain a new perspective by watching free and streaming provocative documentary films. Choose titles by themes such as war, activism, globalization, media, politics, or search by region. FreeDocumentaries.org is a super cool place online. Check it out. All right, you guys. <laughs> I'm standing here with the man that runs this very ship. This is Jim Lauterbach. He also is a tech expert and CEO of Revision 3. <laughs> so, well, I'm reading this really cool. And is going to try to convert me on this whole ebook thing. Because I got to be honest, not a big ebook fan. So, and, and I don't blame you because ebooks have a lot of drawbacks. Right. They have for a long time, and but they are getting better. Uh -huh. So what I did is I brought the latest ebook with me right here from okay. Sony, and I also brought an older one. This is one of the first ones. I'm gonna lift it up right, right here. This is um, don't the, cramp. No, the REB 1200, <laughs> and I love this. But boy, you can certainly tell the differences. This old one is probably weighs about two or three and even pounds. Even the side angle. Look, yeah, look how thin this one is. Yeah. This one weighs under, well under a pound. Let me take you through this because this is Sony's second version of the R of of this one, and the first version had some issues. But the the biggest thing about this is the screen, and it uses something called electronic paper. It, it's beautiful looking. Yeah, it's it's white and yeah. black. It's not color. Right. But it's got great contrast. You can actually read it outdoors. Right. Sunlight bounces off of it. It reflects off, and you can look at it. And the neat thing about the e-paper is that it doesn't require power to keep the display displaying. Usually with typical monitors, you've got to be pumping like, juice in there so that it keeps on refreshing the screen. This, once you do the page, it's set and it doesn't use any more power until you turn the page. So essentially it goes on standby while you're reading it and the only time it uses power is when you turn the page. Yeah, which means that this tiny little device has enough energy to go through like 7,000 page turns. Right. That's like war and peace, remembrance of things <laughs> past in the entire library of William More Shakespeare books than I've or something. Ever read. Yeah. Well, it, it's a lot of stuff. So yeah. let me take you through a couple things on here that are kind of cool because it really does, especially on these lights, it really looks like paper. Um, I'm going to go back to the menu. It holds over 100 books. Um, and you can see this is, it's one of the things I did here is they've got a number of numbers here that you can hit to try and move to different things. So I can go to the beginning of the book, the end of the book, table of contents. But if I go back over here, you can take a look at some other things. Um, these are all my books. A couple of other things in here. Um, it's got photos and music as well. So yeah, I want to show this to you. You can use it as a photo player, although I'm not sure why you'd want to. I'm going to go in here and just pick up a, a photo that I did while we were on vacation. The problem with this is first it's going to come out blurry and then it'll come out clean. Uh huh. It's black and white. Right. You've been out there taking good pictures and then you show them off in black and white. Right. But it, I can totally see the utility of this, especially when you're on vacation or you're backpacking or you want to just keep your packing light. You can store a ton of books on there, pictures of your family, keep you close to home. You know, that, that type of thing I could see it being used uh, for. Is it going to be your main source of photo storage? No. No, but it and it's also it does audio, so you could do it for that. Uh, just a couple other things, two other real neat parts about it. One, Sony is like the master of their own formats, like Memory Stick mm -hmm. and UMD and all those things. Mm -hmm. Well, they actually embraced, of course, it, it does have Memory Stick. Mm -hmm. I'd be remiss without it. But it also supports nice. SD Flash, which is really nice. So you can expand it. And because it holds audio, you can get an 8 gig version of this mm -hmm. and put all your music on there. Also, and this is new with this version, it does have great battery life. But you don't have to worry about bringing that darn charger with you because it'll charge over USB, nice. which is really nice. So you can bring your computer, charge it up that way. Great. Now, how do you get books into it? So that's probably what you're asking yourself, that's right? How do you know? Yeah, well, it's, this? It, this, is, this is the application right here. It, it's, now, I hate these applications. They kind of sort of look like a web page, but they're not a web page. And they don't do all the things you want web pages to do. And, um, but they'll so let you buy it. They will <laughs> let you buy it. And so I bought this brand new book by Terry Pratchett, which is actually what I've been reading on here, called Making Money. And it was about 16 bucks. It's interesting. It was a little bit more expensive um, two days ago when I bought it. Oh, they cut the price. Now it's cheaper than Amazon. I could buy the real book from Amazon for less money a mm -hmm. few days ago. And that's another problem I have with this. You know, you don't have to print the book. You don't have to move the book from a warehouse to somebody else. You don't have to ship it. You don't have to waste the ink. Why aren't the books cheaper? Damn it. <laughs> Why aren't they cheaper? Well, I, and one point that I pointed out to you when we were sidebarring is like, but it's good for the environment. You're like, oh, I never thought about that. Yeah, well, <laughs> it is good for the environment. But, you know, the, the other thing is you can put your own books in here. So uh -huh. if you've got a PDF right. or a Word document, you can load them up. I've actually put a bunch of books like that in here. And that, to me, is also a real killer feature. When the first versions of uh, eBooks came out, 
they wouldn't let you put your own stuff in it. So mm -hmm. you had to buy them from their stores, which weren't as good as this, mm -hmm. didn't have nearly as many books as this, so you were limited basically to those books. At least now, this one, this REB 1200 that I have, now you can put whatever you want into it, which is really nice. The other nice thing about this in general is this has a touch screen, and it has some other features I know that you really like. Wait a minute, I'm gonna uh, open this book. A um, Couple of other features that you really like, you can mark it up, as you see I've used Which I love, I need to interact with my text. So when when this, in this size, does that, then I might be a convert. You know what, when it then does I that, you know what that's gonna mean though? It's gonna mean that the screen will not be as bright, because you're gonna have to put that display don't on it. That. Don't it's gonna mean that the battery is not gonna be as long. <laughs> Look, if you wanna bring all over 100 books with you, somewhere, really good battery life, nice and light, use it, it works, I like it, $300. <laughs> And it is available now. Okay, good argument, not a convert yet, but I will stay tuned. Just try, just okay, 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 try okay, okay. reading a book on it once. That's it, I'm done. Got it. <laughs> okay, now Marty has something very important to tell all you Techzilla fans out there. Hey, with Patrick Norton away tending to his newborn child, I thought I'd take this opportunity to come on the show to explain why I'd be a better host than him not only on this fine program, but also on System and any other show in which he may become involved in perpetuity. I think the primary answer is in the question. Patrick Norton is away tending to his newborn child. What does that tell you? That Patrick Norton must have had sex. So right there, he should be disqualified as host. For how can he honestly relate to you, our geeky audience? Are you guys getting any? No, you're lonely, just like me. And that's why I am a better choice of host, along with Dave Randolph and perhaps Joey. Now then, what would I do as host? First off, no more boring crap like Blu-ray versus HD DVD or whole episodes about batteries. Lame. No, my tech projects would be exciting, hard-hitting, and add value to your lives. I'd also talk a great deal about poo, from a tech angle, of course. For example, RoboDump 1.0 is a robot that poos. Or more accurately, it's a robot that fools people into thinking that it's pooing. To the untrained eye, RoboDump 1.0 appears like a man in a bathroom stall dropping a deuce. And it sounds like that as well. A man dropping a terrifying, mind-bending, universe-shattering deuce. Listen. But in reality, RoboDump 1.0 is a fake set of legs with some sound chips and speakers and wires and stuff attached. But I wouldn't stop there. I'd create RoboDump 2.0, which has all the features of RoboDump 1.0, but also tries to solicit sex from the man in the next stall. And then I'd create RoboDump 3.0, which is merely Dave Randolph chained to the toilet after being force-fed a dizzying amount of laxatives. Finally, instead of breaking things with hammers like Patrick does, I dedicate myself to nurturing and building of neato tech projects that would improve your lives. For example, it's no secret that we're hurtling towards the great undoing, the apocalypse that will occur at the end of the Mayan calendar on December 21st, 2012. So if the geeks are truly to inherit the Earth, we must be prepared. That's why I teach you how to create a gas mask out of common computer parts, such as a CPU fan, a disc cleaner, and a CD case. But a gas mask will not be enough when Galactica invades on July 25th, 2011. It might get you through 2009's Great War of Sorrows with the Red Chinese, but not the invasion of Galactica. Let's not be silly. For that, you'll need to know how to build your very own cabinet shelter safe room, which is an inexpensive, easy, and space-saving way to protect yourself from biological, chemical, nuclear, and space poison contaminants. So for the reasons I've just outlined, plus my universal appeal, as well as the fact that I don't wear kilts and, like most of you, never have sex, I should be the host of Techzilla and System on Revision 3, not Patrick Norton. Tune in next time when I'll explain why it would make sense for me to also replace Alex Albrecht on Dignation. Thank you, and please check out Web Drifter every uh, Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific. Neha, what's coming up next? Thanks, Marty. It's the social networking browser flock.com for the birds. Find out in this week's Code Red. And now for a handy, helpful side of the week. For all those geeks looking to get chic, please direct your browsers to Etsy.com. Etsy.com is a global community market which sells handmade goods online, and a number of their items are made from recycled parts of old computers. When it comes to ways to shop, Etsy delivers interactively. By using the geolocator, you can shop by product origin. You can also search the treasury, showcase, or step into the time machine. The coolest feature is the shop by color group, perfect when you need something in a specific shade. So if you are a geek at with equally geeky deeds or a guy who loves his World of Warcraft widow, get on Etsy and get the latest in nerd couture. Oh, and P.S., they do have stuff for dudes, too. Check it all out at Etsy.com. 
Sponsoring this episode of Techzilla is Netflix. If you like high def, you can get both HD, DVD, and Blu-ray movies and shows. Get a free trial of them by signing up through a site they set up just for us at netflix.com slash techzilla. Jessica, <laughs> my iPod put back together. Look at, look at, how do you feel? I feel a lot better than I did when I was trying to pry the thing open and you with thought a you were razor break blade. It. And I had to enlist the help of some trusty coworkers, but putting it together was actually a snap and it works. Did you put it back together by your lonesome or did you have to enlist more help? I'm proud to say that I did buy my lonesome. Nice. And I'm not even lying. Thanks for Sarah Lane. It's, it's See, all right. you guys can do this. What's the what's great about this? The best part is that I actually have like a cool battery now. That it's not actually die. uncharging before my eyes, <laughs> right. which it was doing this morning. Yeah. Exactly. Yay. All right. So from one cool thing to another cool thing, I must say, um, it's time for a little segment we call Code Red. Block.com is a web browser, but of a much different breed than, let's say, IE or Firefox. It's a social web browser, and this site is meant for people who are on various platforms and desire a one-stop spot for blogging, uploading pics to their photo sharing site, or keeping up on their Zanga. And if you're not on a number of sites, it can be hard, though, to find a purpose for Fluck.com. I am on a number of sites, and I think that I can speak for many folks on the internet today, so I'm liking this so far. Okay, so it's in beta mode. Which, okay. you know, you gotta, you gotta give it a little bit of leeway. Yeah, there might so be some working, bugs. Working out the kinks, newly released uh, last on the, on the 9th of, was it? The 9th of October, was yeah. that last? No. Really? Yeah, just two weeks just ago. recently, recently. Anyway, yeah. So here are the highlights. One of the noteworthy features is the side toolbar, which allows users to view multiple social networks. So right here, Sarah, you've already seen this already. Yeah, you can view multiple social networks in one place, as well as access different social net tasks. I have seen it, but it's it's a, I think this is a really good feature, because normally I, with Firefox, you know, I've got my Facebook, my Pounce, my MySpace. Well, I don't actually really use MySpace, but if I did, right. you know what I mean? I mean, it takes up a lot of space. Right. And you're going back and forth, so it'd be kind of nice to have them all in one all place. All aggregated in one yeah. Okay, so additionally, a number of extensions available. For example, there is a Medium, so that's spelled M E dot D M, um, uh -huh. which allows users to see other Flock users, okay? okay, and even browse together all in real time. That's kind of cool. I mean, so it's like a group thing. It's all about who you know, who your friends are, mm -hmm. so it's all about your Flock friends. Very Web 2.0. Very. Okay, and then one of the coolest features is the web clipboard. I do like this part. So, especially if you're into photos and mm -hmm. such, you can just drag and drop. But you got to be open to the right spot, right there, right there, and right there. <laughs> so one of, that is one of the uh, coolest features. You can drag and drop images for later use. I love so that. So you just take and you drag. That's good. So um, now, on the not so like high points, NetVibes or even iGoogle can serve a similar purpose without having to download stuff with the proper widgets like an RSS feed. Because this is, I mean, in essence, it's it's a it's a download. Yeah. It's a, it's almost like a program. Yep. It's just access in the internet. And iGoogle, for instance, I really like its layout. Like, I like it. Well, it's very customizable. Uh huh. I mean, you got to give iGoogle that. Uh -huh. And it's got that Google feel, and everybody's so familiar with it. Mm -hmm. But at this point, it's like, ah, oh, iGoogle. I know how this goes. Right. I know how everybody's this looks. Everybody's very familiar with Flock it. Flock is, I mean, it's. It's kind of complex. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's a little bit more robust than an iGoogle. It's, it's robust, and that's good if you want a lot of features. You've got to be kinda... crazy about social networking yeah. now in order to find this really useful. I know a few and then people even who more, are crazy about social Even networking. more basic, some people may want to stick to their, their bookmarks, right? So I have to admit that as archaic as they are, uh -huh. I use bookmarks regularly. I, I still do too. Yeah, I bookmarks, do live too. bookmarks. Exactly. Not the flock isn't amazing, right? But I mean, so you can go ahead, try it out, something new for your mix. So, but if you are somewhat new to a number of sites, or if you haven't invested in a site metagator yet, flock.com may be for you. Otherwise, it's just another site to visit. Hmm. Well, that was a really good code, Red Jessica. I don't know about you, Jessica, but I am in the mood to answer an email. So am I. Good. Good news. All, All right. right. So Gary McPherson uh, from Matthews, North Carolina writes, my father has some really old circa 1960s and 1970s home movies on 8mm reels. I'd like to get them converted to DVDs. Mm -hmm. Since these are original films, ensuring their integrity is critical, are there any services or better yet, equipment that can do this? Well, of course, the obvious choice hmm. is to pick up a, a yellow pages. Uh, pick up a yellow pages <laughs> and look up 
probably. Um, uh, you know, uh, transferring. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? what would be the word for that? I wanted to say distribution. But yeah, I mean, there's transfer services. I actually did this with Super 8, uh -huh. old Super 8 movies that I took in high school recently. It was like, I don't even have that machine anymore. So, you know, there's dubbing services that can do it for dubbing. you. Dubbing. Dubbing. Look up dubbing. Yeah. Um, but there's actually a more clever, like, back way around it. And it's kind of ghetto, but we like it. Yeah, it it's actually works really well. What you do is you invest in a projector. Right. Because these are, of course, they're film. You know, right. so you project them on a wall. That's the way that, you know, the parents or the grandparents watched them originally. Right. And then you shoot that projected image on the wall with a camera. Right. And it seems like you're creating sort of like a lossy uh, product that way, but actually, I mean, it's kind of a lossy look to begin with. Well, the eight millimeter, you know, you're gonna really pick up on that, that it's graininess, film. Yeah. you know. It's, it, it's, it's that sort of, um. But you're gonna wanna make sure that it's not like a blown out projector. You're gonna wanna make sure that the lens is really tight so that the colors yeah. are, you know, concentrated and all the lines are sharp. Yeah, and obviously with the camera that you shoot the wall with, you wanna make sure that that's a good enough camera. You're well in focus. It's framed so uh -huh. that you're not cutting out any of the movie. Um, it's actually it's, it's actually not a bad idea, really. Um, it makes a lot more sense than uh, if you don't have a dubbing service in your area. Right. You know, all you really need is a projector and a camera. Right. And if you need any more information, just for capturing sound and more of this, you just Google convert to eight millimeter movies to DVD. There you go. Google. <laughs> all right, you guys. I think that's our show. I think it is too. <laughs> So fun. He was fun. Like you. Hopefully Patrick like Curran will too. be back next week. Until then, I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm Jessica Corbin. See ya. Bye-bye. Big thanks to GoDaddy for sponsoring this episode of TechZilla. If you want to make an impact online, do it with GoDaddy.com. .com names as low as $1.99, plus world-class hosting, fast and easy website builders, and much more. Plus, enter code TECH5 when you check out and save an additional 10% off any order of $40 or more. ...tools that you'll need to open up your iPod and change your battery. You stop that. You stop that right now. <laughs> You're a bad woman. Okay. In in three, two. <laughs> F you, Jessica. Tools that you need to open up your iPod and change your battery. <laughs> All right. All right. You know, I'm just trying to look at you. In. <laughs> shake, shake out the giggles. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake the giggles. Ow. Jess, you can go like this. Just give me a lion face. Lion face. Lion face. Lion face. Lion face. Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm ready.